Welcome back to the lab. Before we get into this week's experiments and I show you what worked and what didn't, let's take a look at the fundamentals of a single cylinder engine and why we're having so much vibration in the first place. Now I know all of you go-kart guys are screaming at me right now saying you haven't balanced your rotating mass. Get inside that motor and balance out that crankshaft with that piston and do all that crazy stuff what they do over there on Go Power, what's it sports or whatever. Well, I'm going to show you why that is not going to eliminate our vibration issue. Certainly balancing a rotating mass is a good idea in any engine but it's not going to eliminate vibration in a single cylinder engine. Now let's take a look at a simplified version of a single cylinder engine in Serial 360. <laughs> also, if you're a Fusion 360 user and you're using images in your videos, don't do this. I can't see what you're trying to show me if you won't hold still. Thank you. Please excuse the crudity of this graphic. As you can see, it is not to scale, nor did I have a chance to paint it. Fundamentals of why a single cylinder engine vibrates. As our piston is moving down our cylinder, it presses down on the connecting rod, which turns our crankshaft and our counterweight. Yay. We've all seen this before. But let's look at the fundamentals of the forces that are involved here. As our piston is moving down the cylinder, its mass is traveling in a linear motion back and forth, up and down the cylinder. The connecting rod is moving side to side. Ah, interesting. Not down, but sideways. Look at our counterweight. What's it doing? It's rotating, but we know from basic physics that the fundamental force of a rotating mass is tangential to the direction of rotation, which means that our counterweight is producing a force that's basically someplace out in this direction, not in this direction. So when does our counterweight balance the force of our piston moving down? Well, if it's moving tangentially, our force here versus our force here puts our rotating mass in balance right there. Now we're not talking about the basic rotating mass. We're talking about the forces that are involved as this thing rotates. Tangential force of the rotating counterweight, this direction. Force of the piston, this direction. These two are now in balance and now they're not in balance. They're still not in balance. Nope, nope, nope. Okay, now they're opposing each other. That's a good thing because our piston is moving up, our counterweight tangential force is moving down. At this point, our forces are in balance and they're not going to vibrate because they're canceling each other out. Problem is, that's the only time that that happens. The other thing that everybody's missing is that this being a single cylinder engine, there is a massive fundamental force, which we do not have a balance for, and that would be this force. That's right. Every time our single cylinder engine fires, we've basically got a mini explosion going on inside the motor. Now some of the energy is going to move out through the cylinder walls in the form of heat, some in the form of sound, but mostly the energy is going into the direction that we designed it to go into. And that is this way, pushing our piston down, which is the reason we have an internal combustion engine in the first place. 
The problem is, remembering Newton's third law, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. As our gasoline charge pushes our piston down, rotating our crankshaft and giving us work, it also is pushing up on the cylinder head, which is dragging our entire engine in this direction. Yay. That is something that we cannot completely get rid of. Now looking at vibration in single cylinder engines, this is a rabbit hole. And having dug through white papers all week, I can tell you there's a lot of smart people that have done a lot of complicated mathematics and have come to the conclusion that, uh, yeah, um, without another cylinder to balance out that force, or preferably mm, seven more, we're never going to completely eliminate vibration in a single cylinder engine. Now back in the 30s, there were some experiments that were done that resulted in balance shafts being used. And if you've ever torn apart a 2.5 liter four cylinder Chrysler motor, you know that it's got a pair of them sitting in the bottom and they mm, sort of help, but yeah, there's still that giant gasoline explosion in this tiny little engine, which is the fundamental force that we're trying to overcome. Now there are three basic strategies we can use. Number one, eliminate the vibration. We just proved that we can't. Number two, isolate the vibration. That is, let the engine shake and place something in between it and us so that it can move around, but we don't. The third would be to absorb the vibration. And that would be to try to damp out this motion in the form of friction and heat, whether that be with a shock absorber or some sort of friction material or something. Some of the mini bike guys raised the issue that if you're isolating the motor and allowing it to vibrate, you've introduced another problem, that being chain alignment. Of course, in a mini bike, you want your chain to align with your rear wheel and in Smog's case, we want it to align with the first jack shaft so that we don't throw chains constantly. And if we're isolating the motor and allowing it to vibrate, we will certainly have a chain alignment problem. That's something we'll have to consider in future episodes. It might be possible to switch from a chain to a V-belt. We know that V-belts can take a tremendous amount of misalignment and vibration and torsional vibration because they're used in lawn mowers and lawn tractors. And if you've ever seen the way those things work, then you know that, well, yeah, not a problem. So that's one idea. Obviously, that's not something that a mini bike guy can use, but, uh, you know, we'll deal with that when we get to it. I did order a set of dynafocal engine mounts like those that are used on my generator. If you watched the last video, you saw those. But while we're waiting for them to be delivered, I thought about something else. Let's try a very simple solution and just place some exercise mat underneath the motor mount. The third strategy, absorption, can get complex very quickly. Now, if I had a motorcycle shock absorber, I could attach it to the engine mount and try to absorb some of the motion of the engine through heat. We know that a shock absorber involves a piston moving through fluid, usually oil, and that motion transfers into heat and that's dissipated out through the sides of the shock absorber. But unfortunately, I don't have one of those. Another strategy would be something called a spring mass damper. That would involve attaching a mass to the engine via a spring and then allowing the engine to transfer its energy into the mass which would then be dissipated by a spring attached to the mass. We'll see how well that worked.
So far the best thing has been strategy number two, isolation. The exercise mat helped quite a bit in reducing the vibrations that were being transferred up to my seat. The spring mass damper also helped when I found the proper orientation for it, but not as much as I had hoped. I think that's partially because I don't know what I'm doing and partially because it's fabric cobbled out of junk I had laying around on the workbench. The good news is that while we were working, the new engine mounts arrived. And they are a very soft durometer rubber. That's a good thing because this stud is designed to attach to the motor mount. And this stud is designed to attach to the engine. And there was nothing connecting these two pieces together except this block of soft rubber. That should go a long way towards strategy number two, isolation. And it may even work towards absorbing some of the energy in the form of heat. Unfortunately, these studs are not long enough to work with the current engine mount, which is a piece of OSB plywood. So I'll have to fabricate a new engine mount. Since this video is running long, we'll save that for next time. Thanks for watching.